Hello, this is Matthew Oates with Salient Process. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Maintain Activities Administration screen of Spark Ignition uh, to manage your database, uh, to manage the importing and exporting of activity templates, and to show you how to create and update existing templates. I'm going to click on Maintain Activities over here. If you don't see these in your panel, uh, check down below with Show More or Show Less. If you click on this little icon here and press Star, It'll bring things up uh, there. If you don't see any of these uh, options here, you're probably not in the right groups. So look in your Spark Administration, uh, Spark Ignition Administration app uh, to make sure you're in the right group so you can see these from the process portal. All right, so we have new activity, listing activities. We're going to start with Manage Database. So in Manage Database, we actually have a data source set here. So by default, Spark Ignition creates schemas on the uh, default database. If you want to point to an external database, uh, you could do that. You would just have to press uh, put a, a different data source in here. Uh, and then you need to create the schemas. Uh, you can drop and recreate schemas uh, automatically in Spark Ignition. So all you need is essentially the data source uh, and you can do all the administration directly from uh, the Spark Ignition administration application. If for whatever reason you're not allowed access to drop and recreate schemas to your data source, you can always download the DDL. So we have DB2, Oracle, SQL Server, you could do that. Uh, most uh, customers are just using the, the default uh, approach here. Uh, so that's what I'm, I'm going to do in this video. Uh, so we have the data source. Uh, we've created our ignition schema. Uh, why don't I first import some definitions? So I have a XML file uh, that's here that has definitions. Remember, if you're automatically generating something from BlueWorks Live with the make with the ready for ignition feature, uh, you can see how to do that in other videos. You won't have to import or export definitions. We automatically generate them for you. Uh, but in this case, I, I'm starting from scratch, so I am going to just go ahead and import these definitions. All right, once, once it's done that, it's imported definitions. We'll check those out here in a bit. Um, but let's say, for instance, you might want to export definitions. It's just as easy. You can just press on export definitions. It shows you what's there. And you could save the file, and it's just going to save this. It'll probably create another one yep, on my desktop that's uh, a copy of the same thing. So uh, that's how you can import and export uh, definitions here. So uh, let's go ahead and go back, and we'll take a look at what this created. So uh, that import had four different activities. You can see that there, make request, respond to demo feedback, and it has documentation here. You can duplicate um, activities by pressing here. If you wanted to duplicate this, maybe rename it uh, so that you could have different activities that have similar information. You could do that if you need to. You can always reuse activity templates in multiple activities if you want to. And you can remove activity templates here. So uh, why don't I start with uh, updating this definition? And so you can see we have the title here that we can adjust. Remember, this title is what IBM BPM uses as, as kind of an identifier. So on any activity, uh, it's going to use this to know which activity template to show as you're running your process. You can have rich te text documentation here. Uh, Spark Ignition activities by default allow you to have five uh, preset outcomes. Uh, so if we take a look at the preview here, we can see what that means. If we go down here, we can see uh, complete, cancel, postpone. Yep, those were the ones that we saw here. Uh, so we have this nice built-in preview to see how this works. Uh, you can have suggestions as uh, anonymous, tracked, or not allowed. Uh, suggestions are actually going to be in, a, in another video. We'll see how suggestions work uh, with this view suggestions administration. Uh, so definitely check out the other video for that. To go down to references, uh, we can create you know, new references. So maybe I want to have the salient process home page. I could do that, and I could say uh, this is the main site for salient process. And maybe I'll go here, salientprocess.com. All right, so I could save this maybe as another link here. I'll type that in. I can even test this immediately, so it lets me know. Um, I can open it in a new window. And so that looks like that's going to be working properly. 
might go ahead and save that so it's going to save all of this information and now when I preview I'll see now that any um, end user who uses this request the demo make request uh, step is going to have a new um, link here to, to get information about salient process. We look at to-dos. So to-dos have names, descriptions. We can indicate whether something is required or optional. We can also add additional documentation. Uh, so if we look at a preview here and I look at this to-do, you can see that this is now required and it has some extra documentation here. And we have you know, the standard options here. Let's say I wanted to make this uh, optional, I could do that. And then if I look at the preview, I could say, you know what, now this looks like it's optional. So it's a really nice, easy way to preview what the end user view will be to, to your customers as you're maintaining these uh, activities. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that back to required. We can also turn document support on and off. What this is going to do is allow us to, on a particular activity, have the end user upload documents to the BPM document store. Uh, so that can be really useful. You can even set document properties that would apply to anyone using the documents for make request. All right, so that's how we can edit a specific activity. Uh, if we want to create a new activity, I could just do this. So I could say example uh, activity here. So I could do that. Once this creates it, it's going to add to the list and it lets me add to do's. And if I try to press save, uh, it's going to actually uh, save this for me, and I'm going to, you know, edit defaulted to postpone and complete. I think that's good, uh, you know, but I, I might want a to do here. So I'm going to have, you know, my to do one, and then I can say this is a description. Right, and so I can set these types of things. I can save this. I could turn document support uh, on or off. I can preview what this would look like if someone implemented. Uh, example activity in one of their processes, I can have this information here. Uh, and you can see that when I go back to my list of activities, you can have this here. This indicates that it, this would apply to any activity. So when you create something from scratch, uh, you can specify uh, by just having the name there, you're specifying that it can be used in any other process application. All right, so those are the main features of the Spark Ignition Administration. Uh, maintain activities dashboard. Uh, check out the other video if you want to learn more about view suggestions or if you want to generate all of these activity information uh, for you, you can look at the video about how you generate IBM BPM apps from BlueWorks Live. Thanks for watching.